Hello dreamers and welcome to The Sleepy Scholar, the podcast that helps you learn in your dreams. I'm Debbie and tonight as you nestle into your pillows and blankets I invite you to journey with me to a friendly farming community in the west of Ireland. Together we'll follow the innocent footsteps of Ailish, an eight-year-old girl with a spirit as vibrant as the Bialtana festival she celebrates. I wrote this story inspired by my own childhood experiences of old customs and local bonfires and from first-hand accounts of people who celebrated Bialthana in a very simple but meaningful way here in Ireland. I really hope it will give you a glimpse into some of the ancient traditions that have remained through the centuries, many of which are still practised to this day. If our journey brings you peace and comfort, please consider subscribing to the channel. Your support fuels my passion for preserving and sharing these stories with you, so we can all find peace at the end of a busy day. Now, tuck yourself into bed. And let's take a moment to unwind before we begin our story. Imagine yourself walking along a winding track in the lush Irish countryside. Spring is at the peak of its splendour and the landscape is covered in vibrant shades of green and yellow. The soft perfume of wildflowers fills the air, evoking memories of the innocence of childhood. In this moment of complete Calm. You are serenaded by the gentle songs of thrushes and cuckoos. Their songs reverberate through the blackthorn trees as if nature herself has composed a lullaby just for you. Their serene melodies wrap themselves around you like a comforting shawl, effortlessly easing away any lingering worries from your day. As you continue your journey down this old grassy boring, The setting sun casts radiant beams of warm orange and cool blue onto wisps of clouds above. This sunset is different to any you've seen before. Even the breeze seems to have hushed momentarily to marvel at this breathtaking display. Take a moment now to draw in a deep breath, filling your lungs with the crisp spring air. You are thankful for this chance to bask in the beauty of the countryside. Allow yourself to unwind as you walk feeling the tension leaving your body with each deliberate step. Connect with nature's calming presence 
and find gratitude for this serene moment in time. Each steady step forward on this path connects you with the earth beneath your feet, reminding you to appreciate the here and now. Now close your eyes and surrender yourself to the gentle caress of the evening breeze against your face. Feel its cool touch whisk away any remaining thoughts or worries that might have been vying for attention within your mind. Remember that while our thoughts and emotions may come and go, peace can always be found in life's simplest pleasures. Not so long ago, nestled in the heart of County Mayo, where fragrant spring blossoms mingled with the earthly scent of turf fires. There was a small but thriving community. This was Scullabeam, a rural townland in the west of Ireland where time seemed to pause and the old ways still endured. Surrounded by rolling hills that held countless old stories, the sound of blackbirds and robins filled the air as April drew to a close. In the local school, the children whispered eagerly to one another about the approaching Bialtana festival, careful not to let the master catch them. The people here were shaped by the land and their simple way of life had maintained an unbroken connection to the old traditions that few places in Ireland could still boast. The towering mountain of Nathan cast a watchful eye over them all its imposing presence making the people feel small and insignificant, yet strangely protected. The air buzzed with excitement as the community bustled with preparations for the ancient festival of Bialtana. Each person, young and old, played their role. The women carefully tied the mayflowers around the animals' necks, their gentle hands brushing against the soft fur in hopes of protecting them from the evil eye. The men with their calloused hands and strong backs worked tirelessly to gather wood for the blazing bonfire they had promised their children that would light up the night sky For their part, the children ran through the fields, collecting bluebells, primroses and buttercups, and weaving them into crowns to wear during the festival. And in the midst of it all was one young girl. Her name was Ailish. She was standing in the middle of the kitchen reading the newspaper under her feet, eager to learn about the world around her. Her mother, Anya, was trying in vain to clean the floor, while dirty boots paraded in and out of the busy house, and young Ailish was not helping the situation. Caught in a dream, she was abruptly hastened out to the yard to help her father with the newborn lambs who needed feeding. 
Although she was only eight years old, she was well able to challenge authority. But ultimately, her love and admiration for her parents always won out. With wild, fair hair and bright blue eyes, she seemed to have walked this earth once before, long, long ago. Reluctantly, she pulled herself away from her treasured reading material to tend to the never-ending farmyard chores while her mother moved about the house in her usual whirlwind, putting everything and everyone in their place as if by magic. Together with her seven sisters, her parents and her grandfather, Ailish lived in a little house on a hill in the middle of Scullabeam, and she spent most of her days exploring the surrounding hills and fields around her. As the festival of Bialtana drew closer, Ailish could hardly contain her excitement. She had been eagerly listening to the stories told by her grandfather about how the ancient festival was celebrated in years gone by. She was fascinated by the tales of bonfires, dancing and offerings to the fairy folk. And though she didn't really understand what it was all about, she was really eager to find out. On this particular day, in April, as Ailish roamed through the hills with her basket in hand, she came across a patch of vibrant yellow gorse bushes. With great enthusiasm, she began picking the flowers, careful to avoid their sharp thorns before adding them to her collection. These colourful, fragrant flowers would be used to decorate the house on the eve of Bialtana, just as they had been for centuries before, by children just like her. As she trimmed each stalk carefully, Ailish remembered what her beloved Granda had explained to her just the night before. Bialtana marked not only the beginning of summer, but also a time of new beginnings and rebirth. This was a time when the boundaries between our world and the other world were thinned, allowing spirits to cross over and bless their crops for a bountiful harvest. In her tiny two-teacher school, Ailish huddled excitedly with her friends during break time as they wondered about what kind of magic might unfold during Bealtana. She knew that there would be music and dancing around the bonfire as the neighbours celebrated together. But maybe, just maybe she would catch a glimpse of one of these otherworldly creatures. Up on the hill she called home, twilight draped its velvet shroud over the fields. It was time for Ailish and her sisters to begin their cherished Bialtana traditions. They adorned their long hair with delicate flowers of blue and yellow, before setting off along the winding roads they knew so well cradling baskets brimming with the gorse flowers they had painstakingly gathered. Each blossom was a vibrant token of protection for this enchanted night, when the mysterious she were believed to roam close. At every stop along their journey, families greeted them with warm smiles and open arms. With reverent care, they placed posies made from these fragrant blooms on the doorsteps and beneath the windowsills, each one acting as a symbolic shield against unseen forces that might harbour ill will. 
The sweet scent of the blossoms permeated the air, mingling with the earthy aroma of turf burning in the hearth of each home. Ailish proudly hung a meticulously woven garland above her own family's weathered oak threshold. She had worked for three long hours in its creation. Her mother Anya gave her a warm hug, knowing that this garland was more than just a simple flower arrangement. It was a heartfelt expression of her love for her family and her respect for tradition. As the sun set on Iha Bjaltna, Eilish could feel a sense of excitement and anticipation in the air. She watched as her father carefully doused their hearth fire with a bucket of water, symbolically extinguishing the old to make way for the new. She couldn't help but feel a twinge of sadness as she remembered all the cosy nights spent together around that very fire with her family. Listening to her grandfather's tales of ancient heroes and mythical creatures. But despite her youth, she understood that this was all part of the ritual as old as time itself. With torches cradled in their hands, Ailish and her seven sisters stepped out into the cool embrace of the evening. The air was crisp, a final whisper of winter's touch soon to be replaced by the warmth of Bjaltra. The gentle glow from their torches painted playful shadows on their faces as they joined their community on a shared journey towards the bonfire field. The bohrin they walked was well trodden, yet tonight it held a certain charm. It wasn't just a walk down a familiar country track. It was an expedition filled with anticipation and community spirit leading them towards the beacon that would soon light up the night sky in honour of Bjaltna. A ripple of excitement coursed through Eilish, mirroring the sparks dancing from her torch. She glanced around at her sisters and neighbours, their faces softly illuminated by the torchlight, eyes sparkling with shared joy each step they took together seemed to tighten the knot that bound them as a community. Beneath the twilight sky, they crossed the green fields of Scullabine, where the scent of damp earth and dew-kissed grass perfumed the air. The soft squelch of mud under their boots played a gentle rhythm merging with distant laughter and whispered conversations. Every so often, Eilish would glance back at their path, a trail marked by scattered lantern light meandering down the well-trodden trail towards its destination, an imposing pile of timber collected over recent weeks by shared labour from this tight-knit farming community. This pile stood tall against the darkening sky, patiently waiting for its transformation into the sacred Bialtana bonfire. As they neared this impending pyre, Eilish felt an overwhelming sense of camaraderie wash over her. This wasn't merely about igniting a fire. It was about rekindling connections within their small community, celebrating collective traditions while bidding farewell to winter's chill. The sound of laughter, the scent of fresh earth, the sight of familiar faces bathed in torchlight, 
All these elements came together to create a symphony that resonated deep within Ailish's heart. This was Scullabeen on Iha Bialtana, a tiny community bound by tradition and shared joy. As the final neighbour arrived at the field, Ailish's father Parik stepped forward carrying a long wooden pole. At its end, a bundle of dry hay and sticks were carefully arranged, ready to be set ablaze. With a strike of a match, Porik ignited the flame, marking the start of the annual tradition. His weathered hands cradled the torch, its glowing embers casting a warm and inviting light in the darkening sky. The anticipation in the air was palpable as he carefully brought the flame to touch the bonfire, which had been built with precision and care. And in an instant, as if by magic, the fire erupted into a brilliant display of light and heat. The crowd erupted into joyful cheers as sparks danced and soared towards the stars, symbolising the defeat of winter and welcoming in the promise of a new season. It was a moment of pure wonder and awe, as if Mother Nature herself was celebrating alongside them. Eilish gazed at the towering inferno, mesmerised by the flickering flames that now illuminated the night. The bonfire crackled and roared as it consumed the wood that had been gathered for so many days. Around her, the field came alive with joy and revelry. Everyone danced and clapped to the lively music of fiddles and bowerons. Their voices joined together in song, the familiar Irish ballads rising on waves of jubilation. Children ran and played, basking in the warmth of the great fire. A few of the men had started a smaller fire nearby. It was time to lead the livestock between the flames to protect them from illness for the coming year. As the farmers led their cattle between them, their soft mooing became a chorus in harmony with the crackling flames. Ailish joined in the procession, her eyes glowing with the fierce spirit of the fire as she passed between its flickering tendrils. The air smelled of smoke and ancient traditions. It all seemed so familiar and yet extraordinary and joyous. As the fire roared and the night grew darker, Eilish and her family settled in for a night of storytelling and celebration. The elders took turns sharing tales of ancient heroes and mysterious creatures that only ventured out on this special night. The children sat wide-eyed and enthralled, their imaginations running wild as they listened to stories of the Ish Shi, the mystical beings that were said to inhabit the hills and fields surrounding them. They held their breath as they heard about brave souls who had encountered these beings and survived to tell the tale. The children's gleeful laughter echoed through the air as they took turns jumping over the fading embers of the bonfire with joyful abandon. One of the older women in the group, her weathered face creased with concern, cautioned the younger ones to be careful and not get burnt. 
but the children were too caught up in their giddiness to pay attention, their eyes alight with magic and freedom. As the revelries died down, Eilish's family made their way back home. Porrick carried a burning ember in a small clay pot, carefully protected from the gentle breeze that whispered through the fields. The dirt path under their feet was still warm from the bonfire's heat, and the air was thick with the scent of smoke and celebration. As they approached their little house on the hill, Eilish saw that her mother had wisely left a small offering of fresh milk and bread on their doorstep for the fairies, thanking them for their blessings on this special night. It was a gesture of respect that had been passed down through generations. Once inside, they gathered around the hearth as her father used the sacred flame to rekindle their own fire. The sound of crackling wood and hissing embers filled the room, bringing warmth and comfort to all who were huddled around it. After a long day of adventure and excitement, the eight girls collapsed into their shared beds in their little cosy bedroom. Their bodies weary, but their spirits high with anticipation for what the first day of summer would bring. The distant sound of birdsong gently filled the room, lulling Eilish into a peaceful sleep as she closed her eyes and let her mind wander to thoughts of blazing bonfires, fragrant flowers and mischievous fairies roaming the land. It wasn't long before the sun peaked over the horizon on the 1st of May and Eilish eagerly leapt out of bed and ran outside. She bent down and gently splashed her face with the sparkling morning dew, following a custom passed down from her sisters to bring luck and beauty for the year ahead. They playfully chanted the old riddle, I wash my face in water that has never rained nor run, and dry it in a towel that was never wove nor spun. Starting off their day with sunshine and laughter, the family gathered round the breakfast table, buttering slices of warm soda bread and drinking cups of sweet milky tea. The residual excitement from the previous night still sparkled in their eyes as they recounted moments from the bonfire celebration. Porig's laughter echoed through the house as Eilish shared a funny incident involving a jittery calf and an overzealous bonfire leap. The rest of the day was filled with schoolwork and the usual duties that befell the girls. But even though it was the normal routine, it felt different, lighter somehow. It was as if Pjaltna had breathed new life into their souls, renewing their hearts with passion and determination for the days ahead. There was only one thing left to do. All eight daughters joined Porik to plant a new rowan tree by their local holy well. As they reached the edge of their land where the well was nestled against the old stone walls covered in green moss, Horik took out a young rowan sapling from his wheelbarrow. Its leaves were bright green and buds promised beautiful white blossoms. One by one, each girl dug into the earth everyone understanding that this tree would outlast them all. As Eilish scooped out her portion of the soil, 
she felt an intrinsic bond with the earth running deep within her. She was contributing to something far greater than herself. A legacy of love for the land spanning generations. With everyone's combined efforts, the sapling was soon nestled comfortably in the rich soil. Paddy began to fill the hole, patting down the earth lovingly around the base of the tree. Two of the girls fetched a bucket of water from the well, and they each took turns gently soaking the roots, ensuring it had all it needed to grow strong and healthy. The sun began to set, casting long shadows that danced over the family as they worked together, their faces glowing in the warm light. Porrick stood back, his proud gaze lingering on his girls and their handiwork. His hands were calloused from the years of hard work he had done but his heart swelled with pride at this moment. He looked down at Ailish. Her blue eyes glistened with curiosity and wonder. He ruffled her hair lovingly, a proud grin on his face. Come on now, girls, called Anya from the kitchen window. Time for tea. The aroma of hearty stew wafted over them as they trudged back home, their hands dirty but their spirits high. Overhead, twinkling stars began to dot the twilight sky as day transitioned into night. The whole family sat around the hearth their faces illuminated by the warm glow of their own Bialtana fire as they ate their simple meal in exhausted silence. The day's events were etched into their memories, each girl lost in her own thoughts and dreams. They knew that these traditions would be passed down through generations ingrained in their family's history for decades to come. The importance of preserving the customs and wisdom of old was not lost on them. It was a duty they gladly embraced. And as darkness settled over the land, a sense of peace and pride washed over them, knowing that they were a part of something timeless and sacred. May we all celebrate our rich heritage and culture, wherever we come from in the world. May we find beauty in simplicity and happiness in the ordinary. And may your dreams tonight be filled with appreciation for all you have. May you wake up refreshed and renewed ready to face the challenges of a new day. Thank you so much for joining me on this nostalgic trip back in time. Till our next adventure into Irish folklore and mythology. Rest well and be safe. Ihawai. Good night.